so many forces involved here. The Shiite rebels, who are known as the Houthis, they are backed by Iran. They pushed further south and captured Taiz, the country's third largest city. President Obama recently held Yemen up as a success story in the war on terror. And look at the streets of those cities now. Our guest is the foreign affairs and economic correspondent for the Associated Press based at United Nations headquarters. Welcome Ahmad Fatih to Midpoint. Ahmad, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Ed, for having me. Let's discuss what has happened today. There was an earlier report from Associated Press that said the president of Yemen had left the country by boat. There was then a follow-up report talking from Reuters saying that he was still in Aden. And now we have another one saying that he is no longer at his residence. No further details on his location. So in other words, we do not know where the president of Yemen is. Would you be shocked at all to find out that he has left the country and pretty much the country has fallen into complete anarchy? Uh, first, I'm not uh, an Associated Press uh, reporter. I'm affiliated. Uh, I'm an Associated Press contractor. Just, just a quick uh, correction. Uh, second, I would not be shocked or surprised if uh, if President Hadi is out of Aden. Uh, anyway, I'm expecting to see him uh, surfacing again during the Arab Summit uh, meeting in Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt in a couple of days. And there are uh, talks by his foreign minister, Riyad Yassin. Uh, into uh, calling on Arab nations uh, to establish a, a, a force primarily consistent of the uh, GCC countries, the Gulf Cooperation uh, Council, uh, and to, to uh, uh, also they are trying to, to get Egypt into it. However, there is no confirmation from the GCC or from Egypt that they are going to uh, are ready to interfere militarily. And this is uh, uh, quite a turning point, his disappearance. Houthis are advancing in the direction of Aden. Uh, however, I have my doubts that they are going to uh, do the final uh, uh, take uh, of the uh, largest uh, economical city or the second largest city in Yemen for uh, mostly uh, geopolitical and geostrategic reasons concerning their main backer, which is Iran, that they continuously uh, uh, deny that they have anything to do with them, which is not the, the truth on the ground. Well, I want to get to Iran here in just a little bit, but let me focus on this with potentially the president being out of the country, though. We hear a lot of reports about Yemen about to uh, descend into a civil war. Ahmed, aren't we already at that point it would seem that this country is from a lot of the reports that we see the video we see this country is completely out of control at this point no one's running the shop it is it is in a civil war uh, i don't know uh, and i don't uh, know really what's the criteria uh, that they are not uh, uh, classifying it as such uh, there is a an internationally recognized president he's been ousted from the main capital sana he moved the capital uh, to Aden in the south, and uh, several countries have moved their embassies and their diplomatic representations from Sana'a into Aden. Uh, there is uh, quite a, a uh, how I say, a, 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 a terminology uh, difference, but the reality on the ground, yes, there is a civil war in Yemen. Yes, it is a, a developing into a very dangerous situation, not only for the uh, countries in the Arab Peninsula, there is Saudi Arabia, of course, and there is the Sultanate of Oman, but it's also uh, endangering the international maritime routes uh, that's connecting the Indian Ocean to the Red Sea and to the Suez Canal. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, I, if, I, I've only uh, got a few seconds left before we take a break, come back, but less than a minute left. Let me ask you regarding this. The Arab League is going to discuss this crisis on Thursday, the crisis in Yemen. Do you expect them to do anything substantive? Uh, that's a question to, yet to be uh, answered. If the Arab League is going to take a unilateral uh, uh, position against the Security Council, because Security Council have not authorized any action, in spite there is a request from uh, Yemen foreign minister to intervention under Chapter 7. Uh, the Security Council, the consensus in the Council till today is not favoring uh, this option. But we will have to, to, to tune in and see what the Arab League is going to come uh, with. Uh, you wouldn't be surprised, though, if nothing comes of it, correct? 
I'm not surprised of anything coming uh, at this uh, stage of, of the crisis. That's what I thought, specifically when we deal with a lot of these different groups. Uh, Ahmed, please stand by just a moment. We'll be right back. An air base in Yemen by U.S. forces evacuated. How does this impact our counterterrorism operations in the region? And more importantly, we talked about a war between ancient enemies. Put Saudi Arabia on a collision course with Iran? We'll talk about that possibility when we come back on Midpoint. Before we continue, I want to bring you some late-breaking news here. Apparently, we have told you earlier today that there will be a press conference later today by the U.S. government regarding Bo Bergdahl. The attorney for the U.S. Army sergeant has now told CBS News that his client will be charged with desertion. He will be with two charges from military prosecution, or from military prosecutors, I should say, as desertion. He will be charged on one count of desertion and one count of misbehavior before the enemy. That is according to CBS News. The government press conference comes up at about 3.30 Eastern time, and we will continue to follow this story for you right here on Newsmax. All right, let's get back to what's happening overseas right now. Ahmed Fathi joins us once again on Midpoint as we talk about what is happening in Yemen at this point. Ahmed, let me ask a very straightforward question here. In the news that we hear that the president has has apparently left the country and what we see going on is this country now at a point where it is unsavable right now it is just going to be this way and it is going to be in a state of civil war and anarchy for some time to come I agree with this uh, point that there is uh, now the, the future is quite uh, uncertain for Yemen there is a uh, civil war will continue and to add to, to, uh, to that, that there is also the, the dangers coming uh, from uh, Al-Qaeda in the Arab Peninsula, which the U.S. Uh, intelligence services have done uh, quite, uh, signif dealt quite significantly with them in the past uh, few years. And we add to that uh, the uh, ISIL or Daesh, uh, the new uh, trend in, in the uh, international terrorism uh, groups. Uh, they have claimed responsibility for the bombing that happened last week in, in Sana'a and uh, in Taiz, and that claimed hundred, more than 100 uh, lives in that uh, uh, bombing attack. So we have tribesmen, we have uh, Houthis, we have Al-Qaeda, we have uh, Daesh. Uh, it's a mixture uh, for disaster, and, I, and I, frankly, I don't see how it's going to be possible to resolve this situation in a political fashion. Uh, the Houthis, uh, just to clarify, that the Houthis used to be in power in Yemen till the 60s. And it took a war uh, by Egypt uh, at that time and cost tens of thousands of uh, Egyptian young uh, men's life, uh, lost their life in Yemen, to uh, break them through from the ruling of the imams uh, of the Houthis. So now but we're but let me Houthis ask. Re let me ask, I only got a few minutes left. I want to make sure we get everything in here, though. But, but let me bring to, to bear this. There's a discussion here that Saudi Arabia is considering sending military forces to Yemen to indirectly confront their rival, Iran. Now, we've heard other reports that say the Saudis are just going to put the military on one side of the border. It's going to be there strictly defensively. Are we looking at the possibility, because Iran is spreading throughout the region, that we could see a battle between Saudi Arabia and Iran, would that not be disastrous? Definitely it would be mega disaster if the two uh, powers in, in the Middle East uh, clashed into a direct war. However, the reports that I have seen uh, uh, that the Saudis uh, have been uh, uh, putting their uh, heavy armory on the border, which is quite uh, expected, there is nothing to fear about. They are acting within their legitimate right uh, inside their borders to protect it. Now that their uh, southern neighbor has uh, going through this turmoil, uh, we will uh, see at one point if the Iranians are going to uh, stop uh, arming the Houthi rebels with arms, there are ships reported uh, unloading uh, tons of uh, uh, hardware uh, heading to, to the Houthis, in addition to the former President uh, Ali Abdullah Saleh, uh, uh, military uh, units that's loyal to him are joining forces with the Houthis. Uh, are we going to see the return of Ali Abdullah Saleh once more? 
Uh, I doubt that Ali Abdullah Saleh the Houthis will allow him. They are just using him uh, at this point. But uh, this is a very unpredictable uh, group uh, of rebels, the Houthis. Uh, they also, uh, more than once, they acting impulsively without any uh, vision or plan, and they revert their position. So it's, uh, it's, it's a huge mess. Uh, what, we are exp what we hope to see is a stronger position from the Security Council in this regard, since it's not just affecting the, the, the territory of, of Yemen, but it's also affecting the international maritime routes that's uh, going uh, from the Indian Ocean to the Red Sea and the Suez Canal to the Mediterranean Something uh, else that we really haven't even talked about at this point, simply because that will involve a lot of trade, that involves a lot of economy, and that involves a lot of money. And then again, you're military, talking about naval uh, services. Military exactly. ships also use this, these routes. You're talking about naval as well and military ships using the routes. Unfortunately, we are all out of time, and it is a mess, and we're going to have to follow this because America will be affected. Ahmed Fathi, thanks so much for your time, my friend. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, Ed. My pleasure. The harmful effects of smoking while pregnant, seen in real time, and the diagnosis that's even difficult for doctors to talk about if indeed you were to go to them and the doctor knew you suffered from it, but many simply don't want to tell you. That word and a whole lot more coming up when we continue right here on Midpoint.